Hello students and welcome to video three in chapter 3.4. And first thing to note, this is an HL only chapter. In the first two videos, we looked at profit and loss second, and uh, the balance sheet. In this video, we're gonna look at depreciation, which relates to both of those. So let's go straight in and define depreciation. So depreciation is when the value of an asset goes down over time. Um, and you can see down here on this graph here, we've looked at something called car depreciation. So basically, you've got the value of the car as a percentage of the original price um, when it was new over years of possession. And you can see that when you buy a new car, it's worth 100% of its value. And then over time, the value of the car goes down. And you can see the reasons for this are operational wear. So as it gets older, the engine gets outdated, it needs more maintenance. Um, and it also becomes outdated because new cars come along that replace it with new technology, et cetera. And one thing about cars is you can see that um, in the earlier years, the value goes down more steeply than later years. So you lose more of the value of the car in the earlier years than the later years. Um, and it's the same for the business. Obviously, business will have cars, so we can use depreciation like that. But also they buy machines um, and other types of assets which will go down in value. And so it's important to put these on the balance sheet so that we can see the real value of the asset over time. And what we're going to do in this chapter is we're going to look at, if I go back to the syllabus, we're going to look at two methods of depreciation, one called the straight line and one called the units of production method. So let's get going on the straight line method, which is by far the easier of the two. So straight line of depreciation is when um, the uh, the asset decreases every year by a constant amount. So like I said, yeah, the pre asset depreciates by the same amount every year. So you can see that the value of the asset goes down in a linear function downwards like this. So in terms of some calculations, let's do some examples. So I'm going to do most of this chapter, most of this video um, using examples. So let's say a delivery company produces a new machine for $100,000, and then they're going to sell it in four years for an expected value of $20,000. Um, piece of vocabulary here is that this $20,000 that they sell it for is called the residual value, which is kind of like the remaining value at the end of the lifetime. The scrap value would be if they kind of threw it away, if you like, or they scrapped um, the machine later on. And we can then put this into a table. So we can see that they're going to have this asset for four years. So we're going to have years one, two, three, and four. Um, we've got the book value. The book value is the value of the asset at that time. And then the annual depreciation is how much the asset goes down by during that year. When we do examples, this is going to make more sense. And then we've got a first formula. Annual depreciation is original value minus expected residual value divided by expected future life of the asset. Um, this formula might seem common sense to you. It might seem horrible. But again, let's do an example. So what we're going to get, the annual depreciation is going to be the original value, like I said, minus expected original value divided by the life. Um, and we can then do put the numbers in to get this answer here. So let's go through this formula in turn. The original value is the 100,000 that they bought it for. So the original means like when they started with the asset. So that's 100,000. The residual value we just talked about a minute ago is the 20,000. So this is the price that they're going to sell it for. And then the expected future life of the asset they've told us is four years. So we do 100 minus the 20 divided by four gives us 20,000 per year. And then we can then put that into the table because we can see that every year the depreciation is going to be 20,000. What we can then do is we can calculate the book value at the end of each year, where again, the book value is the value of the asset on the balance sheet or in the books. So the book value at the end of year one is we take um, at year zero, so the beginning, um, the value of the asset is 100,000. We know that this, this um, asset depreciates by 20,000 during the year. So at the end of year one, the value of the asset is 80,000. Then at the end of year two, we then minus the annual depreciation in year two, which again is 20 to get 60,000. 
minus 20 again to get 40,000. And then finally, we minus this 20 again to get 20,000. And this is what straight line depreciation is. Every year, the annual depreciation is exactly the same, which is why we just divide it by the four up there. And then we get uh, a situation like this. So this is the graph I showed you at the beginning, where the value of the asset just goes down exactly like that over time. So let's do another example. So an IT business buys computers worth 450,000. They sell them in five years for an expected value of 40,000. And then we're going to calculate the annual depreciation, the book value at the end of year two. And so when we get a question like this, well, we can put the values into the table. We know we're going to have five years, so we're going to need one more row. We know that the book value at the beginning is 450, and we know that the residual value is 40. So just from the question, we can actually just put those into a table. And I'd highly recommend putting this into a table. You don't need to, but it's what I would do. It just I just like to see it like that. So to calculate the annual depreciation, we follow the formula again. So we do the 450, which is the original value, minus what we sell it for, which is the 40,000. And then we divide that by five, and therefore we get 82,000 per year. And we can then fill out the table. We can see that the depreciation's 82, 82, 82, all the way down to the bottom. Uh, then what we can do is we can calculate the book value at the end of year two. So the book value at the end of year one is the 450, which is the original book value, minus one year of depreciation, which gives us 368, which is just the book value here at year one. And then the book value at the end of year two is we minus two years worth of depreciation, which gives us 286,000. And then in theory, we can then finish the table down to the bottom. And uh, one reason for doing that is you can then double check your answers. But by, by continuing to year five, you should get a book value of 40,000 at the end. So that should say five just there. All right, so that is the straight line value um, depreciation method done. Let's move on to the units of production method, which is similar, um, but has some nastier calculations. The formula is a bit nasty, we'll see. Okay, so units of production is when we depreciate, the value of the asset goes down according to the amount of production that it does during that year. So to put that another way, the more an asset is expected to be used in a year, the more depreciation will be recorded and the value of that asset will go down more during that year. So this is the example we're gonna look at in a minute. And you can see that the depreciation in years two and three is higher because the value of the asset goes down because you can see that the gradient of this line is bigger than here. So let's look at the example, let's look at the numbers, and then we'll go through that in detail. So we've got the same numbers from the first, when we did the straight line method. We buy it for 100, we sell it for 20, but now we can see um, how many units of production this machine will do. So in year one, it will produce 500 units. What well, doesn't matter what they're producing at the moment. Um, in years two and three, they produce 1,500. And in year four, they go back to 500. So already what the units of production is going to tell me is for the depreciation is going to be higher in years two and three because they're producing more. So we should see that in our table. So the formula is just really horrible. It's like this. I'm not even going to say it because it's too long. But this is what the formula looks like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to common sense this formula because I don't particularly like this formula either. So let's put some numbers in. I keep on moving my head. Uh, so uh, what we want to do first is calculate depreciation in year one. So I'm going to go through this step by step by expanding this formula into a more common sense version. So the first thing you can see is that the lifetime depreciation is going to be 80,000. Where do we get that? Well, we start with 100 and we end with 20, and that's what it tells us in the question. So during the four years, we need to depreciate the asset by 80,000. In year one, the machinery is producing 500 units. It tells us that here. And the total production during the lifetime of the, of the asset is 500 plus 1,500 in years two and three, and then 500 in year four. And that comes to a total of 4,000. So during the lifetime of this project, it produces 4,000. In year one, it only produces 500. So basically, 
um, we can calculate the depreciation by doing the 500 in this year divided by the 4,000 times the total depreciation, which is 80, and that will give us 10,000 during that year. So during the first year, the depreciation is 10,000, and then we get the book value by doing the 100,000 at the beginning minus the depreciation gives us 90. Let's go on to unit two, on to, on to, unit two, on to year two. So again, we know the lifetime depreciation is 80. The machine produces 1,500 during this year. Total production during the whole lifetime is 4,000. So now we do 1,500 divided by 4,000 times the 80, which gives us 30,000. And we can see that during year two, there's more depreciation than year one, which makes sense because during year two, they've got 1,500 production as opposed to 500 production. And we then get the book value by doing the 90 minus the 30 equals 60. And then we can finish the table off like that, where we continue doing the annual depreciation each year, then calculate the book value. And then we then get this graph from before. And you can see that years two and three, when we get 30 depreciation, the value of the asset falls higher than the other years. So let's do another example. We're just going to fly through this one, otherwise the video will be very long. Um, so the same as before, they buy computers for 450. They sell them in five years for 40,000. And now the, can produce, the, can, the computers produce 2,000 in year one, 2,000 in year two, 3,000 in year three, and then 4,000 in year four and five. And the question here is calculate using the units of production method, annual depreciation in years one and two, and then book value at the end of year two. So we can then set up the table as before. We know it's five years. We know the initial book value. We know the ending book value. So now let's do the annual depreciation which I've calculated there by doing this. So we again, I'm in theory using this formula, but I'm actually just common sensing it. So the annual depreciation in year one is, well, how much do they produce in year one? They produce 2,000. What's the total lifetime production? We do the 2,000 minus plus the 3,000, plus the 2,000 plus two years worth of 4,000. So it's two plus three plus two plus four plus four gives us 15,000. And then we've got the lifetime depreciation, which is the original value of 450 minus the residual value of 40, which gives us 54,666.67. And then we do the same for year two, where in year two, they're doing 3,000 production. So we put 3,000 into the formula, gives us 82. And then from there, we can then calculate the book value at the end of year two, because we take the 450 minus the 54 minus the 82, gives us 313. 333.33. 333. We could then, in theory, finish the table, but we don't need to. Okay, that's those two methods done. How do they affect the balance sheet and the PL? Well, if you go back to video two, when we did the balance sheet, the balance sheet starts with property, plant, and equipment, which are our assets, and then accumulated depreciation. So on the balance sheet here, we bought all of our assets for 900. And so far, we've had depreciation of 100. So we do the 900 minus 100 gives us the overall value of 800. And this is kind of like the book value of the asset. So that's how depreciation goes onto the balance sheet. Under the profit and loss, annual depreciation is an expense. So it would go down here. So we would minus it from gross profit. And here, only the depreciation per year would go through the profit and loss. Final thing, appropriateness of each depreciation method. So for the straight line method, the benefits are it's very simple to calculate because it's the same every year. And it's also much easier to understand, I think, because every year is exactly the same. Um, and I would say it's good for small, um, small assets, which kind of don't have a lot of value and won't impact the balance sheet. The problem with it, it's generally unrealistic. We saw earlier with the car, with cars, the car will depreciate by more in early years than later years, whereas the straight line method has the same every year. So normally assets lose more value in earlier years. So the straight line value, straight line method has a problem with realism. The units of production method is better in some ways because we get more depreciation in years of heavy use, and so therefore is more accurate. And that kind of makes sense. With cars, if you drive it more heavily over a year, then the value of that car will depreciate more heavily because the more kilometers there are on a car, um, then the more the less the value of that car. 
But the problem is it's harder to calculate and it's a lot less intuitive and kind of easy to understand. Right, that is that chapter done. There's a lot in that video. I'll see you next time.